I'm here today at Palace Cinemas and I've got the privilege to be with the executive producer of Broken Vessels, Jeff Vega. Jeff, how are you? Oh man, I'm doing wonderful. You've traveled a long way to be here. Yes, I have. And Australia is a great country. The people are fantastic. And we just came out of the premiere and it was wonderful. It was well received. And man, I'm just totally elated. This actually film came about as a result of one of my clients being a traumatic brain injury survivor. And she had such a compelling story uh, that we decided that we needed to do it to share with uh, actually now in Australia to the world, basically. And originally, it was our first premiere was supposed to be in Kansas City, but because we met Norita from here from Australia, and one thing led to another, and she invited me here, and she said, Jeff, I will put on a premiere if you'll come. And, and if you know Norita, you can't tell her no. She invited me to come to a conference, and she said, Jeff, you come to the conference, and I'll, I'll show the film a few days later here. And, and so, as I said, I couldn't tell her no, and I came, and we're here tonight, and we've had a wonderful event, packed house. Well done, and congratulations on an incredible premiere, and I'm sure this is going to touch a lot of hearts. I'm here today with the incredible Narita Omar, who's a survivor of a brain injury, and she's today an incredible inspiration to a lot of the survivors of brain injuries and other things. She's a, a public speaker, she's a coach, and she's now uh, being interviewed on this incredible feature film. Um, Narita, tell us, what's your involvement here and why broken vessels? Well, here's the thing. Um, I started Strive and Thrive after the after losing my friend to suicide, and for three years, you know, all the work that I did with Strive and Thrive uh, around, you know, positive mental health, um, you know, in in the niche of depression, anxiety, creating awareness about suicide prevention and all that. But I have always, you know, in my heart wanted to do something for my own community, which is the brain injury community, because that's my story. I'm a brain injury survivor. But when I was in the theatre, I have to constantly remind myself of my present time that this is who am I today. Um, but you know, bringing back 13 years ago, it was very challenging. It was so challenging that I actually, you know, what you call it, didn't want to be around anymore and um, but however I'm just so blessed I personally personally believe that I was meant to be here and I had to go through everything that I went through to do what I do today and um, and from there you know from one thing led to another and I started visualizing something beautiful in store for me so instead of feeling like my life is over I start you know shifting my mind you know, focusing on there could be something beautiful in store for me. And from there, the first thing I did was asking for help. And to some people, maybe it's not a big deal. But to me, at that time, I was this person who never asked for help. So asking for help was a big thing for me. And I really love this term new normal because we have been conditioned while we were growing up that things are supposed to be a certain way or a person should be a certain way. Like for example, oh, you know, you, you finish school, you're supposed to get a job or you're supposed to go to uni or you're supposed to find someone and get married or, or, or you're supposed to be like this or like that. But when you go through such a traumatic experience where you actually have to really go through this self-discovery of who you truly are and then accept yourself as the way you are um, regardless of what society or people think so my first two years you know I burned out a lot um, I had chronic pains and I was in bed like every month sometimes if I'm lucky two days or three days but sometimes five days and there was a point of time it was six days and I had to like kind of like work from the bed and all that but then I realized that you know um, the if I were to do this I have to take my, take care of myself because if I'm sick all the time, you know, then I'm not able to do what I want to do. And if I do not look after myself, then one day I'm going to get worse and that's it. I'm not going to be able to continue this work. And, and, and with that, it takes sacrifices because I have to say no to social parties. I have to say no to social gatherings because I'm at home meditating, you know, yeah. I think everyone who um, wants to learn more about people with head injury and how to support family members, or they might even have it themselves, I couldn't recommend it enough. It was absolutely amazing. I found it, uh, yeah, very touching and a bit sad at um, stages in there to realise that these people, it's going to affect them for the rest of their life. It's quite raw. It was emotional at times and I think it would touch a lot of hearts because it was real. It was the real deal. 
I'm Bas Tedros for Undercurrent.